A lot of news, a lot of questions. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Talking Trucks. I am Andre. And I'm Kent with MrTruck.com. Thank you for joining, guys. And today's a big show because we have a lot of truck news. There is stuff going on. Um, and also a lot of questions. And uh, uh, there's two things kind of driving this show today. Uh, the first thing is that Chevrolet announced their fuel economy ratings officially. Yes, I'm so happy about that. Three liter Duramax. Yes, I was, yes. you know, we both kind of guessed that 32 mile an hour range or mile per gallon and yeah. they beat us. They kicked our butts and I, that's surprising Yes, to so me. W before we get to that, um, this puts pressure on the competition. Oh, it does? Yes, so Ram is, has a new updated Eco Diesel 3 liter V6 coming out, and they have to get it right. Yeah, well, they have a target now, so they know what they got to be. Yes, which and, is <laughs> and they're also in the middle of their own um, uh, settlement uh, lawsuit from before, from the previous Eco oh, Diesel. Oh, they haven't settled that Well, yet? not all, and I'll tell you some news about this. Okay. Yes. But guys, also, uh, we're taking your questions using Super Chat. In order to get to the front of the line, of course, donations are appreciated using Super Chat. But we also have some prepared questions that you guys sent in, sent us via the uh, email, um, ask at tfltruck.com. So as always, thank you. So do you want to tell them about this diesel news? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because Ford came out with a 3-liter V6 a couple years ago. And they were rated at 30 miles per gallon on a two-wheel drive. Yes. And 25 on a four-wheel drive. Yes, which is a big decrease yes, for a Polo Yes, yes. And now GM comes out with this new inline six, three liter, 10 speed, and it's getting on the highway and a two-wheel drive, 33 miles a gallon. 33, that's a that's, huge number. That's big, and um, it's 29 so, in a four-wheel drive. Yes, and I actually talked to the chief engineer, Tim Herrick, about the difference. He explained you know, how that works. Yeah, two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive because it's four MPG is a lot. Yeah, well, Ford, Ford is five MPG. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, in the old days, it used to be a four-wheel drive and a two-wheel drive right neck and neck, and actually the old Eco Diesel was neck and neck. It was the same two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive yeah. from the Ram trucks, which yeah. was impressive. So why can't anybody else do that? Well, so right now, the latest EPA cycle, so you know how they keep changing their rules uh, year to year? Right, usually. it's it's ridiculous. Um, the EPA needs to get their together. So, um, they were verified, according to Chevrolet, they verified a lot of the data that they sent them. Chevrolet sent them data, and EPA also put it on their own rollers. Okay. By rollers, I mean like a dyno. Right, a dyno Resi rolling resistance. Right, That's and so about. a two-wheel drive truck um, and a four-wheel drive truck is heavier than the two-wheel drive, and it puts it in a different weight class, according to the EPA. And wow. it's not like class one, two, three. Right. It's their own classification within Yeah, them. it's it's all um, coded. Nobody knows what it and is. And for a four-wheel drive, they put more resistance, more road load into those rollers. Just because the four-wheel drive is heavier? Yes. And because they have to test with a slightly heavier uh, road load, that, that's why the numbers come down for a four-wheel drive. Well, that's interesting. So how did Ram get by with being the same on both four-wheel drive well, That and was a while ago. I know, it was a while ago. Is that yeah. EPA had some other new rule uh, back then? Could well, they been. change it every year. Yeah. So 18, 19, um, I think they keep updating their regulations and rules and the way they test. Yeah. Uh, but 33 sure for a full-size truck, I'm pretty impressed. Yeah, I've, I've heard rumors about that a while back, and when we drove those things, you know, we did little tiny tests of our own, mm -hmm. and to me, it looked like about 32, so I was glad it went at 33. I'm glad it didn't go below 32. Yeah. So this is big news. I mean, th that would make, a, that's a game changer, especially when it's the same price as a 6.2 gas. Mm -hmm. So th th they are finally got their marketing crap together, you know. You should yeah. be always bragged about Ram knowing how to market. I think GM now has pulled it out, and... And this should be a big seller. I'm, I'm really impressed with how things are working out so far. Yeah. I think somebody I know real closely should buy one of those. I can't. I bought one. I bought another truck in December, so I can't run out and buy one. Otherwise, I'd are be you, certain are in you the market. Are you hinting at something? I'm hinting at somebody. Somebody probably in this room uh, should get one of those. Um, That's what I'm thinking. And, and by the way, guys, this show and also the other live shows that we're doing uh, Mondays and Fridays, we want to have more interaction. Um, so we're going to be watching the. Uh, um, uh, chat room more closely. We're going to be answering more questions. More questions. That's um, good. That's how we started this. We used uh, to do that. Right? Yeah, and I days. can see a lot of you guys already are submitting some comments. Uh, some of you say 33 MPG are great, and Boyd and Chuck and uh, Dougie do, but some of you are not impressed, at least with the EPA. Juan Castle says the EPA numbers are bogus. 
Well, <laughs> well, I mean, I think we're all trying to do our best, and so does the yeah, EPA. Right. But of course, there is more improvement to be done. Yeah. Um, we don't test the half tons as much like we do the heavy duties because those yeah. are rated by the EPA. So we've kind of taken that on ourselves to try to get some test runs there. We may have to start doing it to the half tons now just so we can cross-reference the EPA numbers and TFL's numbers. Yeah, and we do towing MPG tests yes, too. Yes, that, that's important Because uh, you, don't, you, don't, you cannot find those numbers anywhere else. For example, Mike Pate says uh, you can count on TFL truck, we'll do some real world testing. Yep. Yes, you can count on it. Real and world. And actually, uh, Roman is going to a GMC event in mid-August. And um, I think I can get a GMC or a Chevy 3 liter diesel maybe a few weeks after that. Well, so in good. September, you guys should see a lot more real world testing uh, of this truck and also the eco diesel. Because we haven't really tested that 3 liter much. We went to the event and oh, I, no, see, we did not. I, I, I don't know why. Oh, there it is. Yeah, finally pulled up. But yeah, that's that's the thing is we didn't get to pull traders with them at the event. No, we, we did not. We the traders with the heavy duties, but that's what I'm looking forward to is pulling some traders with that. So Lu Luis uh, Cabrera, $2, really appreciate your donation. His question is, when will the Tundra be redesigned? How long um, to wait? I think just one more year. That's all I'm going to wait. One more year, Toyota. That's all I'm giving you. You better come out with some new spangled stuff next year. That's all so, I got to say. So we don't have an official word oh. yet. Ted hasn't said we're going to debut this time, but we have some strong hint hints. First of all, there are prototypes are running around. They are. The Tundra prototypes we've seen in Arizona. Um, I think in Colorado there was one in Michigan. Are the ones you've seen that had independent rear end? No. Well, oh. some of them have uh, masking. You, can't you know, tell. They're, they're okay. can't, you cannot okay. really tell. And some of them we didn't get a chance to look. Because that's um, what I've heard independent rear end. I've heard twin turbos yeah. on the 3.5. But I've Toyota loves Chicago Auto Show. And when so is that? That's in February. Oh. So um, that's what some rumors are saying that in February we may see a, you know, a debut of a new truck. Mm. So cross your fingers. Maybe we'll see a new Tundra in February, which is what? five or six months away. Why wouldn't they do it to Texas Truck Road? No, not Texas Truck Rodeo, the Texas State Fair. Oh, State Fair. Fair. The That's State where a lot Fair. of stuff, Ford introduces stuff there. Why, it's possible. Get on it, Toyota. It's, it's possible. Uh, Joseph uh, says uh, 2045 Toyota Tundra will have a mid-cycle refresh. Well. 24, I don't want to wait I, that I long. Get, I get your joke. I think I get it. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they're right on the edge. I think they're right there. I think something's coming. I think something's cooking. Well, they have to answer all the competition. Well, know. they do. And There's the other trucks, new Ford, have, yeah, they have not Chevy, set still. New Ram. You got a twelve-year-old truck. And, you know, you're, yeah. you you don't want to keep being the old truck. So, so what does Ram have to do, right? So they're well, coming out with a three-liter third generation, according to them. And it'll probably be an um, eight-speed eco diesel. That's eight kind speed. of what they're into Correct. is eight speeds. And they've announced a couple of things. They announced the power numbers. So two hundred and sixty mm -hmm. horsepower and 480 pound-feet of torque okay. was the number on the RAM, the, the newest 2020 version of it. Um, so more horsepower, more torque, mm -hmm. but not as much horsepower as the Chevy engine, which is yeah. 277. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. They, they claimed a huge towing number, the RAM guys did, like 12,500 pounds or approximately was their um, towing number. And of course the GM towing number is 9,300. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but, how are they going to compete? We don't know yet on the MPG and also, you know, all the regulations, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, GM, GM is a 10-speed. I, I, think, I think more gears is the answer for a lot of questions. So you got you to gotta hit the oh, chicken. Oh, you got to hit that chicken. Oh. Uh, so. Five bucks, uh, Mr. Thompson. Alva uh, Thompson. Uh, Tommy! Thank you. Oh, there's Tommy. Tommy! Hey, Tommy, uh, do you have a question? Oh, look at that, he caught it. <laughs> I don't, actually. T Tommy does not have a question. Um, Andre and I are working on a secret trailering project right now. Oh. Yes, so guys, you will see oh. it maybe next week. Secret trailering project. Uh, uh, regular trailer, but not a regular Is vehicle. It bigger than a bread box? Uh, it, practically. <laughs> um, the vehicle we're using doesn't have a brake controller. That Prodigy, when I plug it in, is there a light on it that comes on, or is it just... No, no, the, 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 the Prodigy remote brake controller does not have a light, but you have to, uh, are you talking about the handheld unit? Yeah. Um, you got to Velcro that puppy on that hitch. Well, yes, but inside, you have, you have a 12 volt cigarette lighter? I don't actually know if this vehicle is a 12 volt lighter. It's so unusual. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll go figure it out. <laughs> Any guesses on what we're towing with? Guys, if you can guess <laughs> what we're trying to tow with, uh, let us know in the, in the comments. 
Um, it's a spaceship, that's what it is. Scott Robinson says SpaceX just landed its 44th rocket. Well, that's great news, Holy actually. Holy cow. Um, it's kind of related to what we're talking about Those with Tommy. Those are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so I, I just heard from one of the owners of an EcoDiesel 2014 model. Right. Which was a Jeep Grand Cherokee three liter EcoDiesel. And he's been waiting 10 weeks <laughs> to get a settlement claim from FCA. Oh. Because the settlement is it's settled. So and, and they're getting is, cash back? For yeah, them? people wow. are getting cash back. Uh, oh. Original owners are getting about $3,000. Holy cow! Of, of money from the settlement, from the class action. But he's been waiting 10 weeks and he hasn't heard a word from FCA. So he's pretty upset. Well, is that what you get or do you get a fix to the truck or you just live with both? The missions really get no, both. No, no. So you get both. Uh, every truck gets a uh, uh, recall. Okay, a new program probably. Yeah, new programming okay. and maybe a couple of uh, hardware components. He, did, he wasn't sure exactly about his Jeep. Hmm. But uh, original owners can also get up to $3,000 in, uh, in a retribution. Wow. And he's not getting that. Um, Gavin says we're towing with a Model S. Um, well, it's close. Uh, Russell got model it. X. Russell 747 says model Tesla Model X. That's a spaceship. It's kind of a spaceship. It's got, it's got little wings that come out. And <laughs> yes. It takes so off. we're doing a trailing project with that, and stay tuned for that. That's going to be very, very interesting. But we have more news. More news. What do you think about an all-electric F-150? Well, I told you, I think electric is the way to go. Train's been doing it for 50 years. I, I think that's the future. By golly, I do. Well, I like, I like the idea of a hybrid. I want to try one of those out, but then, you know, electric all depends on the range, but you know it's coming. I mean, look at all the manufacturers. Everybody's racing to the electrics. Yes. So it's well, coming. Well, you mentioned trains, yeah. but they pulled 10 uh, railroad cars yeah. with the F-150. <laughs> uh, so uh, if, in case you haven't heard of uh, F-150, well, first of all, I was surprised that um, Ford actually showed it. Yeah, and they didn't do it as a media event. They did it as no, a regular broadcast uh, or kind of advertisement, advertisement or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> they showed it and they pulled 1.25 million pounds uh, via strap, via this all-wheel, what appeared to be all-wheel drive, all-electric prototype. Um, that was impressive. Do you have any pictures in the bed? What if they got about 10,000 pounds of weight in the back of that? They it's not should squatting. weigh it down. You got to have some weight. And it's got to be in full drive, probably hit, in low hit the range. Chicken. So, uh... <laughs> Pr Pr Prashant Patel um, has a question. Uh, thank you for your donation. A uh, better option to buy F-350 and, and trailer or box truck? For what? For what do you I, use I, it for? Are you talking about the model Tesla Model X uh, for towing? Um, Prashant, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to, but we always try to stay on the cutting edge or the leading edge, and we want to see how this Tesla thing works out. We're talking about a box truck. I mean, it's like a, one of those cutaways like, uh, with a square commercial truck yeah 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 um marcus is asking mr truck and andre do you think that hg trucks will be hybrids in the next five years or all electric that's an interesting question well it sure could be because it's escalating now it was picking up kind of slowly i mean ford and gm gm had one a long time ago that you had to make sure you're going downhill before you took off because it wouldn't quite go uphill and so they've all tried it but now, yeah, so now that the technology's there, they're coming out with new batteries that are liquid-filled and all kinds of things for cooling, and, and mm -hmm. it's all about how long the, you know, the power we know is there, 100% torque out of those electric motors. So you put four of them on, you know, one on each wheel, just like the old space buggy was. Space got, buggy? Yeah, so as long as oh, the big... Oh, the lunar Yeah, the lunar, lunar thing. It, yeah. They ran around on my birthday when I was 12. They just showed it 50-year anniversary. Space anyway, buggy. They had a space buggy in it. It was an electric motor on each yeah. wheel. Yeah. And I thought it was fantastic. But 100% torque. That's why trains use it. So if you've got that, you get a big enough motor, you get a big enough battery pack. That's what it's all about. The battery technology is going to catch up. So I think, yes, you can see it in heavy duties. I think, it, it, I mean... At some point, we'll be the Jetsons. We'll have that little robot made. Are we going to fly around? We'll fly around in our saucers, and you know, sometimes we'll <laughs> touch down and pull a trailer. Because <laughs> you can't keep the trailer steady upstairs. So uh, Well, um, I th you know, when 2019 Ram Heavy Duty trucks came out, I was kind of expecting like an e-torque Heavy Duty. It didn't come, but well, it may be soon. So I agree with you, uh, Mr. Yeah. Truck, that uh, the day will come, especially if maybe not all electric at first, uh, and maybe not diesel electric, because that would be very expensive, I think, because diesel engines are already expensive, electricity and batteries are already expensive yeah, um, yeah. components. 
uh, but maybe some sort of a gas hybrid, uh, electric hybrid, may make sense. Yeah, and that's what, you know, like Tesla, was. their plan was on those semis is to lease them out. Now there's several companies making hybrid semis and they're leasing them out to get, overcome that initial cost. So maybe some point where you get a heavy duty diesel electric and you have to lease it to make the payments on it and then yeah. you get traded in, you know, in three years or whatever. So there's all kinds of options out there. Hey, and Andre, you yes. missed a super chat. I did? Yeah. Five dollar super chat from Alva Thompson is asking, when oh. should we see the specifically the Army Green 2020 to, uh, Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro in uh, showrooms? Alva, I'm so sorry. I'm um, sorry I missed you. I, I thought I was going to ask your question, but something else happened. Um, uh, Tommy just drove it in near Moab, Utah. Oh, he uh, drove the, the green the one. The 2020, yes. the green one. Okay. It was very dusty, right. but it made a lot of people excited. Yeah, that's why he's um, asking the questions about why do they have drum brakes on the rear. I saw that yeah, video. Yeah. yeah, it was a good question. Tommy, yeah. did, Tommy did a really good job on this video. Um, I think Tommy said uh, in the fall. Is that is that right? Um, what would be that, the... Be the I 20, think it's in the, the fall. 20 models, it's so 2020 models, but fall. they're not quite available yet. Army green is the new special color, like Voodoo Blue. But was. I love Voodoo Blue. <laughs> but that was 19. Now this is 2020. Okay. Okay. Um, it's coming in a few months, just a couple of months. So thank you for that question. Um, the other, in other news, Ford also trademarked a couple of uh, names. Um, adrenaline was one. Yeah, I barely remember adrenaline. And barely that, remember. <laughs> do you have any in, in you now? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, I'm drinking and, and coffee, <laughs> cold, expensive coffee. And Badlands. Badlands Bad, is cool. Does Badlands have any history? Yeah, that, you know. Do you know? Well, I mean, I other than I, the actual Badlands. I don't remember, but you know, I, I, I keep dreaming that they'll come back with the High Boy. They never owned that name. No. If they could somehow buy that name, I want the High Boy back. But Badlands can be. Well, they got tremor. So, so what are you going to put it on? You're going to put it on a, I don't know what you're going to put it on. I don't know what the so next stain is. Adrenaline, they had it uh, a, a decade ago. Um, yeah. It was an Explorer sport track. Right. And it was adrenaline with no E at the end. It was basically supposed to be a high performance yeah. uh, truck, truck, right. mid-size truck. That's what adrenaline would be. It'd be a performance like the Lightning or something, which I, mm -hmm. I want the Lightning come back. And then the Badlands, you'd think it'd have to be some kind of a powerful off-road truck yeah. by the name. But you like, know. Yeah, Rambling Ram exact, you know, had the exact same point. Um, and so I don't know, uh, but off-road trucks are more popular these days than street performance trucks. Right, right. So I don't know if Ford is trying to do another street performance truck here. Badlands sounds like off-road. Yeah, it right? does. I'm it going through like the Badlands. Tough, yeah, yeah. But of course they have the 2020 Super Duty Tremor, which is an off-road truck, which is uh, should be trying to fight against the power wagon, right? Yes, that's true. That's what Tremor's all about. Now you know, I've got a new test trailer and it's called Iron Bull. <laughs> Awesome. Which I think they named it after me. Awesome. I'm the Iron Bull. Anyway. Yes. That's trailer news. So cool. What, what's, what's up with your trailer? Tell us about it. Oh, it's a dump trailer. Yeah. It's from Iron Bull, <laughs> which is North Star out of Texas. And yeah. it's 16 feet long, 8 feet wide. It's a dump trailer. That's and it's a got big rims. dump, actually. I put Dodzilla Overkill on it. I put four wheelers on it. Can you dump the Zilla off? Yes. Of it? Yeah, you can dump it off wherever you want to throw it. But no, it's a really cool trader. So we can load it up. It's got a tarp. We can put rock in it. We can put, you know, mother in laws. We can put anybody in it. What? And haul around. And, okay. and it's going to be a cool trader. It's my new test trader. So now I'll go back to four test traders. But anyway. What, what is this conversation about the Grand Marquis and the Crown Vic? Uh, they went away. They're goodbye. Why? Well, do they, they want to bring back? them back? Those are cars. Who cares? Well, well anyway. Big boats, man. Chicken, Those another chicken. Are... Oh, oh. A hyper mag. Cool. Better hybrid system, a locomotive or a Pacifica style? Locomotive. Uh, you try, well, I don't you're know. asking us to compare a locomotive to a Pacifica van? Because locomotive is a diesel generator running an electric motor, and that's what powers the wheels on the train. So I don't. Uh, is, that's, Pacifica that's, is not a diesel generator. Yeah, that's no. how most. Um, but Pacifica hybrids. is a nice vehicle, and yeah. I hope they build an all-electric Pacifica. Well, yeah, you know, we went to an Explorer project out there where you threw a hatchet a hundred times at a bullseye. I know. And they that's had, my nickname. Ex, yeah, <laughs> bullseye. They had Explorers there that had a really cool hybrid system. And I think the exact system with that yes. ten speed yes. will be on the one fifty. I mean, maybe with a bigger torque converter and, and some of that. So that's, you know, that's, that's the technology that the hybrids are, is, you know, stored battery and, and regenerative braking, you know, all the normal stuff. So Yeah, and the Ford system is very clever, actually. So they had the 10-speed, like you said, yeah. and then in front of it was the electric motor that yeah. was also using the same transmission fluid 
to cool itself down and to operate in unison. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also decouple. There is a clutch there right. that can uh, you can run the truck or a car uh, on gas only, electric only, or a combination. Of yeah. The two. And it had a cool battery so, system, and it was liquid cool too. Yeah. And what's nice about it, it was under the floor, it was out of the way. I had you know hybrid focus or fusion, hybrid fusion. And it was great, 45 miles a gallon, but they took a bunch of the trunk space for the battery. Mm. And that was bad. I couldn't even get a spare tire. So now what they've learned from that in is... In the floor. Yeah. It's in it, the floor it, it's, Yeah, it's, it's out of the way, so it doesn't take up cargo space, doesn't take up people space. That's exactly how it's mm -hmm. designed. So it's a smart way of doing it. I think that's the same system with a little modification that goes in the 150. Uh, Gavin uh, Venom, Veneman uh, uh, had a, has a question. Mr. Truck and Andre, which vehicle do you daily drive and which half-ton diesel would you buy? Well, I tell you what, right now, looking at MPG, not knowing, you know, dependability and reliability, I love that new GM diesel, just the whole idea. I second that three it. That's 3-liter, inline six, 10-speed, same price as the 6.2. I mean, I like the whole concept. Yeah. I mean, if I didn't have it, just, I just bought a truck in December, I mean, you know, and, and that really excites me. That truck would be one that I would be top of my list if I was buying one right now. And, and I hope somebody else I know really close buys one so we can all go out and drive it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. um, Mr. Truck wants me to buy one. <laughs> um, I wanted to buy one, but I was waiting for this number and I finally got it today. So I need to make a decision. But I daily drive still the Hummer H2, uh, the project truck from last year. And also the project truck from East, this year, I've been driving a lot, which is the Rem Rebel Rouser. Yeah, you just kind of goof which, off with all the vehicles. Which, which is a project, awesome um, yeah. Ram truck. Um, and you can see that on TFL truck, our project there. Well, my daily um, driver is my 150 with the EcoBoost, 10 speed, twin turbo, okay. dual injection. So really quick, another super crew. Another sure. news, Ford, <laughs> Ford is all over this 20 news. inch wheel, oh, go ahead, yes. Uh, Ford is all over this news uh, document today. Oh, they are? Today. Okay. Um, th there's also uh, an updated lawsuit um, that uh, the Higgins Berman uh, law firm uh, filed against Ford and for alleging, allegedly, uh, uh, Ford installed a device to indicate optimistic MPG figures for the owners. Is that a class action lawsuit? It's a class action lawsuit. Wow. Um, and it also inc includes the Ford Ranger lawsuit that was uh, oh. actually existing before this one. Can I get 3,000 bucks if I join up? They, you know, like the, the Eco Diesel did, they give them 3,000 bucks or supposedly did. Well, you're an owner of a truck right Maybe now. Maybe I get three grand. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I have no idea. But Ford does not have an official comment because it's an ongoing litigation. Well, sure. That's years from um, now before that gets settled. And um, that said, but but it kind of reminds us of all these, you know, Eco Diesel and for, uh, VW. Yeah, CDI, that's, that, and all those losses. Which makes me skeptical because you look, Volkswagen got spanked and they settled theirs. And now FCA is getting spanked and I guess they're settling they're theirs. So look at all the, the knowledge that they can learn from. We don't have to do the same thing. So why would anybody screw with that stuff when they just see all these other guys getting this, their pants suit off? Yeah, I, I, I can't believe, I, I don't know, but I can't believe Ford would do that. I mean, yeah, the so risk is too high. Why, why would you it, do it? It is a I, high risk. Um, I don't know. So we need to learn more about this as the lawsuit progresses. So uh, we'll, we'll be there. But so getting back to some questions and also, Zach, if you can point out if there are any questions we're missing, uh, let us know. Um, I wanted to hit this one first from Javier. Uh, will the Ram EcoDiesel be also an e-torque system? And the answer right now is no. It will not be an e-torque diesel. Right. I'm not so sure that e-torque is... is it's been trouble free for them. I've heard there's some recalls, or what do you know about the e-torque? Is there anything? Well, new we have our Ram Rebel is an e-torque. Yes. Um, right now, we've had it for about seven months since November, about eight months. Um, no issues with an e-torque system yeah, whatsoever. Uh, for us, about eight thousand miles we drove uh, already on the truck. Uh, we had some recalls on, uh, on e-torque or something else. No, not really on e-torque. Okay. No, okay, on some good. other parts like the brake pedal, uh, the. Um, the battery cable connection. Uh, there's several. Well, there small, was like small things. So, some some small potatoes. We had some recalls. But you did replace the trader plug the other day. Yes, we replaced the seven pin connector because it was giving us issues, um, inconsistent readings. Yes. Lights or trailer brakes. So that's replaced and that's working better. Good. Uh, but the eco diesel uh, is, is going to be pure diesel, uh, no electric electric assist right now. What's the next question? We're going to go to the top to Nathaniel. Yeah, so uh, Nathaniel has a question. 
If you could have one do-it-all SUV or truck, what would it be? Well, wow, that's pretty generic. But he's looking at several vehicles, uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk or a Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. And his budget is about 45,000 bucks. Oh, now that killed it right there. He wants all that stuff for 45 grand. I was thinking about the Lincoln Navigator, <laughs> but it's not 45 grand. <laughs> I like your evil laugh. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, no, so Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk is a cool machine because you have the luxury in the space of a five, you know, fairly big five That's person a SUV. Cherokee, yeah. Yeah. And uh, some affordability with the Trailhawk package. And Roman and Nathan actually tested one in Moab last year, and they were very happy with it. Or on the other side, you have a kind of a oh. smaller midsize truck. Yeah, he only wants to tow 3,000 pounds, so that makes it a lot easier. I mean, you I, know. I would go for the Grand Cherokee on this one, maybe. What do you think? Because the Toyota is a good truck. You could have maybe both of them for 45, although the Jeep might be more expensive. Yeah, that's true. I, I don't know that that. The Tacoma, I don't would say that that's well, 3,000 pounds, anything. I can pull 3,000 pounds. But anyway, By hand. yeah. So I don't know. That is a good question. But I mean, you can, how, how low can you go with a Colorado uh, ZR2 without the bison package? Right. It's probably a little higher than that, huh? Higher than 45,000? Well, since he's not looking to tow much, I would say in this case, go for the Grand Cherokee. Yeah. That's my, that's he, my take. Does he haul that many people around? I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Um, by the way, we have some other questions in the chat room I here. I have a good one. Yeah. From uh, Jonathan McClellan, do you believe that Ram held back their MPG numbers on the Eco Diesel to tune them and come out on top in 2020? So they were waiting for Ford at the Power Stroke and GM now with the Duramax so they can tune their truck and then when they do release their figures, hey, we're off set number one. So you're saying that before the Eco Diesel they got spanked for? was very capable they just had it dialed back no Is right now the mean, upcoming one the new one that's coming the one, yeah. uh, well you, they got cannot a target speculate i will yeah. refer you to my report well they've got it no i'm just kidding <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this no, is the molar report not go there, please. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, no. i won't read off my report either <laughs> you have to read no, it to me so i can say yes or no but you know that's that's interesting no. and and who knows what they do but you so, know first they've of got all, a target they have a target. They got to beat 33 if they're going to be the king of the hill again. So first of all, we don't know. We don't work for uh, Ram, and um, that's internal information probably that the scheduling they have. And secondly, uh, I don't know. I don't know what their debut schedule was, but they told us a while ago that August was going to be their release date. Yes. For yes. the first drive. So so I don't know how they set that date. We just don't know. But it's. It's better for them to uh, see what the competition is doing and then react. Right. We'll probably know in about 30 days or so. If, you yeah. Know, what's going on? We'll probably on. know soon. Obviously, we don't have that knowledge, that information. Um, uh, Joseph says, uh, Cowboys and Russians is going to take an evil turn. Well, wow. What is yes. that? Is that a drink or what is that? <laughs> Cowboys and Russians. That's our show. Oh, really? That's um, who we are, Cowboys and Russians. Um, uh, Alex is asking, well, any Nissan Armada? I'm, I'm a rap date? singer, so. Ooh, holy cow, look at this. Oh, go ahead. Um, Alex is asking, any updates on the Nissan Armada for 2020? We don't know any. Uh, I, I don't know. Oh, they I don't Armada. have any updates. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, but they should have some updates because they always do tweak something. But it's not going to be a significant update, I don't think. But um, Alex points out that the new Chevy Tahoe and um, some other uh, SUVs are coming out. So that's yes. going to be an interesting Interesting well, space. And they're going to follow probably the look of the Silverado, the 1500. And the Sierra so, for yes. the GMC. So, yeah. so that's all going to be happening. But, yeah, I don't know. I think over there at Nissan, they're just so happy if they sell anything. They're probably buying a lot of bottles of champagne so they can celebrate each time they make a sale. Yeah. <laughs> you look really cool with a hat down low. <laughs> down low? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to put, to put, to put, yeah, I'm a rapper. <laughs> I'm a rapper to the max. Uh, Noel had a question that we answered on tfltruck.com. So if you want more discussion, that's on the website as well. His question is, uh, why hasn't GM and Ram built a 45 uh, class or a 55 class truck that's with an actual pickup bed? Right. It, that's interesting because Ford has had that 450 now for a long time. Yes. And, you know, it was a big debate whether it's class four, class three, blah, blah, blah. But well, it's set the GBW at 14,000 yeah. pounds. Well, that's, yeah. Which makes it class three. Yes, I know that. Mm. And they bet they'll give it a higher towing rating, they'll give it a higher payload, they'll go nuts over. But tell me this. Yes. 
Uh, I, I suppose they've analyzed the market, but see, that's a different frame. It's a wide frame for the pickup trucks, narrow frame, flat frame for the bodybuilders for those cabin chassis. And so I guess they're saying that they just not have a big enough market on the to road. To actually but, install the bed. But yeah, yeah, when Ford had all those problems with the six liter diesel, and we know all the problems back then, it was way back before the six, seven diesel, Ram came out, they came out late with a crew cab and they came out kicking because people were upset with Ford over that six liter diesel. And then Ram took over a bunch of market in the fleet mm -hmm. and they're still doing very, very well. So I, I think they're doing well enough with those cabin chassis in the fleet that they don't need it in a pickup truck. But I mean, who but, knows? Uh, who my knows? answer would be build your own. So well, buy yeah. a 4,500 truck. Um, and maybe in the aftermarket, there could be a flatbed that you could well, yes. that you could modify for yourself uh, yes. and actually build one. Like the one we had, a flatbed with the toolboxes yes. is fine, but you can't really yes. mount a pickup truck bed on that. No, with that narrow no, no. frame. So, but, it's, but he was saying he wanted the pickup truck bed to maybe mount a camper on top of it. Yeah, a lot of people are doing that, putting so, a camper on a flatbed, and yeah. they got all that extra room for more toolboxes, more storage. You always need more storage. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, but that's that's kind of like building your own all over overland. Ooh, thing. chicken. Chicken, chicken time. Chicken. I told um, me to hit him again. R red. Red seventy one eighty eight. Five dollars. <laughs> thank you very much. Doesn't seem to be a lot of interest in the diesel half tons. Well, that's <laughs> kind of interesting. So Ford, <laughs> Ford came out with the F one fifty diesel. Yes, it's still there. Yes. But they priced it very high level with a high yeah. option content. And then they changed it to an and XLT then they changed option. It. I think that. I don't know, the strategy may not have worked completely the way they wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Um, But I think, uh, yes, uh, Chevrolet said they they could build up to 10% of their trucks with a diesel. Right. They have a capacity to build that. Whether they will sell that many, we don't know yet. Now, that's the thing is, you know, Ford, you know, th that had a lot of hype over that three liter, and we all thought this was going to be great. And then we pulled traders with them in the mountains, and it wasn't great. I mean, but you know, we, that's because we had high expectations of the heavy duties. They flat out fly up the mountains. Well, that, the half tons were more aimed at fuel mileage, so they didn't fly up the mountains. Yeah. So if you're pulling trade, you can't get disappointed. But you know, I don't know, the Eco Diesel, when it first came out from Ram, it was kind of gutless on those mountains too. Now it's improving. And we've we know tested that, the one, that yes, one too. Yes, we've had problems getting up the hill. So the new one hopefully has more power and we'll see if the Chevy kicks butt with that inline six. Then it might spur Ford off to you know do some changes in there, maybe some axle ratios or something. Yeah. But that's been kind of the letdown. We waited forever to get a half ton diesel. We're so excited. And now we're going to have three of them. Yes, we all have them. But yes. you know, so I don't know. Uh, hopefully um, that the, that that Chevy can revive that uh, that experience in the half ton market. I'll be tickled. And then we'll see Ford improve, and we'll, and we'll, we'll you know we'll hopefully we'll see what Ram comes out with. Yes, and uh, of course Dan Atkinson, yeah. Um, He's mentioning that the Land Rover diesel was the basis for the Ford F-150 diesel. Right. They just updated it. Well, they say they that, but that is Ford's factory. I know they sell to the Jaguar. They yes. sell to Land Rover. Yes. It yes. is Ford's engine. So yes. yeah, it's in it's in what they, the factory that they own. So yeah, you could, it's more more actually accurate to call it a Ford diesel than is a Land Rover or a Jaguar diesel. Yeah, it's Ford owned. Um, there's a, a little quick lightning round at the end. Uh, there's a few comments and questions here because we've got to close the show. Well, I've got a question uh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Says up? Mr. Truck, what do you think of a performance gladiator like a track cock or a Hemi? Wow! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a yes. Yes, yes. We always want power, but that would be cool. <laughs> I mean, that truck, uh, the, apparently the way it's selling, it has room for more, more serious options. So, yeah. I mean, a performance gladiator, I think that's an idea. That might really do well, and you know, but do it before the the coder, where they're going to call it, comes out, because you know how they're blending the markets. But we still have some questions on here too, don't we? Uh, well, we're almost done uh, with this question, um, but there's a couple of other questions, like from I think from Gavin, will the next suburban have a three-liter diesel? I hope so, but we don't know for sure. That would make sense if, that would if, make sense. if they keep chassis. improving it. I, I would uh, say yes. Right, Jeep Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer um, news. Um, not quite yet, but we know they're coming. I'm very excited that FCA will have competition in the big SUV space. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be good. It's, it will be body on frame SUVs. So that's always good for truckers uh, uh, like all of us. We like towing with them. And uh, TRX news, we don't have any for Ram TRX yet. Uh, would the Hellcat engine fit in the Gladiator? I think somebody has already tried it. Yeah, just, just stretch so, the nose out so the so, tires go past the engine. So you, uh, <laughs> you can shoehorn one in. Um, so yeah, and um, 
There's a question from Diego. Um, after the Rebel gets a new Eco Diesel, what would go for the Power Wagon? I don't know um, if it's losing ground to AT4 GMC or the Tremor Ford. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I don't. I'm not quite worried for the Power Wagon yet. You think it's going to stay with the I, 6.4 Hemi? I think it might stay with that Hemi and an eight-speed, which work really well together. Yeah. And yeah. it still has the solid axles, all the other attributes. Well, I'm yeah. not quite worried for the Power Wagon quite yet. Well, I'm sure that FCA probably sends out flyers and emails to all those owners of Ram Power Wagons and asks them, would you want a diesel? What do you want? I mean, they have focus groups all over the place. I'm sure they're doing the research on that now. And that's what it's all based on. When you start spending millions of dollars building a vehicle, putting up the, you know, the factories, yeah. you do a lot of research. All right, guys. Well, on this note, uh, we'll have to close until next week. Are you around next week? Yes, Thursday, Thursday. I am. So, I guys, come am. back for it's another August. talking. Is that August? It we will be August. Yes, next yes, yes, that's August first. We oh celebrate my, Truck oh Day. Oh my then. gosh! It will be sales numbers. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> he hates sales numbers. Uh, all right, They're guys. So thank exciting. you. So exciting! I thank love sales numbers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. All right. Okay, Zach, open your mouth and let's throw a donut. At you. <laughs> But we haven't answered all these questions. We did this one, this one, this one, this one.